Timber Terror is the original wooden coaster at Silverwood. This out and back was designed by CCI, but it was built by Fred Grubb. Yes, that Fred Grubb that later went on to found Rocky Mountain Construction. Timber Terror recently underwent some changes to its track and trains, but they may not have been positive changes. So is the ride better than ever, or did the changes hurt the ride experience? Find out in this review of Timber Terror. Silverwood opened back in 1988, and by the mid-1990s, their only coaster was a relocated corkscrew from Knott's Berry Farm. Silverwood knew they needed something bigger. Custom Coasters International or CCI made a name for themselves in the 1990s. They installed affordable wood coasters at small to medium-sized amusement parks. In 1996, Silverwood added their very own wood coaster from CCI named Grizzly. This name did not last long. After just the ride's first season, the name was changed to Timber Terror. This was to avoid litigation with the Paramount Parks that already featured two wood coasters named Grizzly. But I'm glad this change was made. First, it gave the Silverwood Woody a more unique name. Second and more importantly, we were gifted with one of my favorite ride logos as you enter the station. It is a giant tree that is eating the track and erupting lava out of its head. It is a beautiful visual. I wish Silverwood sold this on a shirt. While the coaster itself has no theming, the overall presentation is solid. The bunny hills run alongside the edge of the park. This creates a nice backdrop from within the park. And at night, the park has some multicolored lights illuminating the lift supports. But the coaster has an even more dominant presence from outside the park. It serves as an advertising beacon. Before this coaster opened, it was very difficult to spot any of Silverwood's attractions from the road. There were simply too many trees. Timber Terror changed that. The layout ran parallel to Route 95, and the lift hill would bear the park's name for good measure. Today, you can see a few other coasters popping above the tree line, most prominently Aftershock. But this was the first ride that was highly visible to the road. The ride received positive reviews, and the park saw an increase in attendance immediately. So it's not too surprising the park went back to CCI in 1999 for a second wood coaster in Tremors. This one will have a sprawling layout, allowing it to complement the bunny hills of Timber Terror. While Silverwood has continued to grow, Timber Terror's capacity has not. This is a big issue for many rides at this park now. This ride opened with and still has just one train. That train has six cars. Each car has two rows of two, so the ride holds a maximum of 24 riders at a time. This was fine for the crowds that Silverwood saw in the mid-1990s, but as the park has continued to grow, the one train operations have become problematic on busier days. Holiday World was another park that opened two CCI wood coasters around the same time as Silverwood. Both Raven and Legend originally had just one train as well. To deal with the increased capacity, Holiday World added transfer tracks and a second train to both of these rides. I would love if Silverwood could do something similar with their wood coasters, but there isn't much room for a transfer track. The woodies basically go right up to the lift hill, and the rides are bordered by pathways. The other issue is that restraint checks can also take a while for Timber Terror. In 2019, the operators would first check the seatbelt of each rider. They would then make a second pass to check the restraints. Fortunately, the park streamlined the restraint check process when I returned in 2023. They now check both in the same pass, making it far more efficient. But I was faced with another issue in 2023. Staffing. At many points in the day, Timber Terror had just one operator on the ride platform. I was stunned a coaster of this scale was even allowed to run with just one staff member. This meant the operator had to do a lot to dispatch a train. They first had to run down the air gates to height check everyone. Then they had to open the gates of the control panel. Then they had to check each row on both sides of the train, seat belt and lap bar. Then they also had to manually verify the exit gate was shut for good measure. Then they'd have to go back to the control panel to actually dispatch the train. Most operators moved at a brisk pace, but this procedure basically guaranteed the train would be parked in the station for 4 minutes minimum. Add in the 2 minute cycle time, and you're looking at about 10 trains being sent out an hour at best. Under these conditions, the line crawls. When I visited in 2019, a full queue for this ride took about an hour on a busy summer Saturday. The park was much less busy in my 2023 visits. The ride was just a 2-3 train weight maximum on a Sunday, 
but on a Saturday, it took 30 to 40 minutes to get through a third of the line. Midday on that Saturday, the ride did have an additional platform attendant for a few hours and that helped significantly, cutting dispatch times in half. So hopefully the ride can be staffed like this on busy days going forwards. But just in case, I strongly recommend starting your day at Silverwood with both Timber Terror and Tremors. These are consistently the two longest lines in the dry park from experience. I mentioned at the start that Timber Terror had undergone some changes. There are two big ones. First, the restraints were changed for the 2020 season. The ride originally had glorious buzz bars. These restraints rested a foot above the lap of most riders, giving you far more room to experience this ride's airtime. However, Many parks have switched away from these for liability and maintenance reasons. Speaking to the latter issue, Timber Terror typically had one or two rows broken in its final years with the buzz bars. The ride still features seatbelts, but the lap bars are individually ratcheting. Timber Terror doesn't have the strongest airtime, but it was pretty sustained on the outward leg, so the buzz bars really accentuated the negative Gs. The airtime feels way weaker now because you can't lift nearly as high. The coaster is at least retaining its low 42 inch height requirement though. Second, the ride is not entirely a wood coaster anymore. As I mentioned at the start, Fred Grubb built this coaster before he founded the nearby Rocky Mountain Construction or RMC. Before the 2022 season, sections of Timber Terror received RMC's 208 Retrack track. This was added to the far turnaround in Helix. These sections are remarkably smooth but I did find the improved tracking toned down the laterals. I never found this ride rough even before the steel track was added, and it's currently riding extremely smoothly up front. Even in the very back, the ride is mostly smooth minus the pull out from the first drop. I would not be surprised if this section gets some track work in the future. As for which seat you want, I find the front and back cars equally as good on this coaster, so I would try both if time permits. Before delving into my element by element breakdown, I need to note that I have not experienced Timber Terror at Scarywood. During the park's Halloween event, they run Timber Terror backwards. That's always a treat on a ride that's smooth, and I imagine it was really sweet with those buzz bars. Once dispatched, you subtly turn out of the station and ascend the 85 foot or 26 meter tall lift hill. You get a nice view of Roller Coaster Alley and then you can see the mountains in the distance. At the top, you turn 90 degrees to the left, and then you head down the ride's largest drop by far. It is a straight plunge back down to ground level, and it has good sustained floater airtime in that back car too. Just watch out for that pullout if you're in the very back though. It's pretty shaky as of this recording. As I noted earlier, the outward leg used to have some really great airtime. It was super sustained with those buzz bars. Now it's noticeably weaker because your body will not be displaced nearly as much. There are also a few spots where the rides seem to be missing airtime compared to my 2019 rides, so I'm not sure if the profiling was adjusted or if the ride was running slow for me. I did try both early and late in the day with no change. The first bunny hill has weaker floater. It's over pretty quickly in the back, but it's still fairly sustained towards the front. Then comes the double up. The first hump is decent floater up front, but you won't really come out of your seat further back in the train anymore. Then no one got any airtime on the second hump of my 2023 rides. That was the case in the resultant plunge as well, which is a shame because it's quite sizable as a nice head chopper with some supports. Meanwhile, that second hump and drop hit airtime in 2019. You then rise into the far turnaround. I remember getting some sweet floater airtime in 2019 but I was firmly planted in my seat on this visit. Remember, this section was redone by RMC. You then dip back down to the ground and then rise upwards. This elongated turn used to have strong sustained laterals. The lats are as sustained as before, but their strength is now on the weaker side unfortunately. You then kick off the return run. Even in 2019, Timber Terror's second half was weak. It had barely any airtime then, and it's still the case today. The return run starts with another large and straight drop. Good speed, but no airtime. Then comes back to back bunny hills. The first is a tiny bit of airtime for those in the front and back cars, but the second one is a complete dud. It has no airtime, nor has it ever. 
and I find it a bit strange as this is the tallest of the ride's three bunny hills. Typically, you want hills to get smaller as the ride progresses, not larger. You then jump into the helix, which never has had any airtime. You then have a 540 degree downward spiral. This had okay laterals in the past. Now the laterals are similarly as strong today, but they don't really kick in until the second half of the helix. As you exit the element, you have a small dip downwards. It wouldn't give any airtime anyway, but there is a trim break that starts to slow you down as well. You then rise upwards and slightly to the right for the final breaks. This transition gives a solid and abrupt lateral kink in the front of the train, but you slow down before it can be experienced in the back rows. You then come to a stop and then slowly return to the station, ending the 2,700 foot or 820 meter long coaster. So what would I rate Timber Terror? Based on my 2023 rides, I would give this coaster a 5 out of 10. It's a fine wooden coaster, just nothing spectacular. The ride's placement along the roadway is cool, and it's very smooth, especially with the steel track and the turns. There's still a few spots of airtime, particularly in those first few hills, and you also get some lats in the turns, but the forces have been dialed back from what they were previously. The timber terror I experienced back in 2019 would have earned another 2-2.5 two two points. That version had a great outward leg. The return run was never the ride's strong point though. While this is now the weakest coaster in Roller Coaster Alley, it is still a fun ride. It's a good option for families between its comfortable ride experience, low height requirement, and forces. And from what I saw, it is still very popular with locals, so I do not fault the park for how it's running today, even if it's not quite what a coaster enthusiast may prefer. So those are my thoughts on Timber Terror at Silverwood. What do you think about the CCI Wood Coaster? Do you think the ride experience was better before the changes as well? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.